Hello families. Hello my sweet littles. How are you doing today? I'm so glad to hear it. Guess what? I went on an adventure today. Mm -hmm. So today I ventured out of the house and I got in my car. I haven't been in my car very much and if I was I would just be going a short distance here in town. I haven't left Benicia very often only one other time in a couple of months and that is a long time for me when i got in my car and i drove and i drove about 20 minutes away to a place called sassoon and i went to a farm stand and the farm stand is called larry's produce and your parents might know about larry's produce but right now instead of shopping at their produce stand and getting out of your car and walking around and picking your own vegetables they are putting together a beautiful box for everyone to take with them. And you don't have to even get out of your car. And they put it right into your vehicle and then you wave goodbye after paying for it at first. So that's what I did today. And driving in the car was an experience. I appreciated it so much. Listening to the music, getting to see the scenery. I saw cows, I saw horses and I saw the rolling hills. It was a lovely drive. And then getting towards where the farm stand was, there were grapevines and lots of animals out. I saw chickens just roaming around right next to a country road. It was really very pretty and I enjoyed the ride. And then when I got to the farm stand, it was lovely to talk to people and say hi and just be grateful for the food that they were offering for everyone to pick up without having to get out of their cars. So I was really appreciative and I wanted to show you one of the things that came in that box. Can you tell me what this is? I know most of you may. I'm going to give you a second. It's called a artichoke. And the artichoke is something that you can eat, but you have to cook it first. I think if I was an animal, perhaps I might eat it just raw like this, but really the flavor of the artichoke comes out best when you either steam it or roast it or cook it on the stove in order to allow this blossom to sort of open up and the interior part of it to soften so that you're able to extract it with your teeth if you're using the leaves, or you can eat the middle part, which is called the heart. So once you've removed all of these leaves on the center is a, a, is a part that you can eat and it's called the artichoke heart. And sometimes you'll find artichokes on pizza mm -hmm. or you'll find them grilled or you will find them in something called an antipasto. Antipasta? Antipasto. Antipasta. <laughs> Not sure at the moment. As I said it out loud, I wasn't sure if that was the right word. I do know it, but not at this moment for some reason. At any rate, with the artichoke, you after you steam it, you remove the leaf and you put the leaf in your mouth and then you scrape the leaf in between the two front portions of your teeth on your top and bottom, and it takes off some of that yummy goodness that's hiding inside the leaf that you'll want to eat. So I'll be, I'll be steaming these and seeing if Joshua wants to have one. I've tried doing this before and he wasn't really interested, but he's older now. So I'm hoping that maybe he's changed his ways. And when you serve this, you would sometimes serve it with butter and you dip it in and you eat it. Or you can serve it with mayonnaise if that's something that you like. Or maybe like a vinaigrette. Do you know what a vinaigrette is? Well, vinaigrette is oil and vinegar sometimes a little honey, some spices like garlic and herbs, and then maybe a little bit of mustard, and you whisk, 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 stir, 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 and then at the end it becomes this really delectable, yummy flavor that you can pour on a salad or on your artichoke. Well, I love cooking, and I love seeing all of your cooking. Ellie, Thank you for sharing your cooking adventure. I saw that you made a taco all by yourself and you put pasta in it. That was very creative. I like 
seeing your creative cooking. If you have something that you've cooked that you would like to share with me, please send me a video or a picture because it makes my day. So let's get on with our book. I haven't even introduced it yet. I've been talking so much. <gasps> Look what we're going to be reading. It's called Once I Ate a Pie. <laughs> The puppy looks like he has little pie prints all over the place. Should the puppy eat the pie? Probably not. Before we go ahead and start this book, let me put on some lavender. Mm. And let's take a deep breath. We're going to take a deep breath together. Oh, sees the cat fell. Let's take a deep breath. Okay, inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Excellent. Mm, smells so good. All right, let's light our candle. it's really warm and it keeps on blowing out the candle so let me try it one last time maybe this time maybe this time if I try to protect it oh it happened again okay we're gonna do it one last time this time I'm gonna put it over here I'm gonna try to light it over here It's not going to happen today. It isn't. But, well, maybe it will. Let's do this over here. Can you see? I'll protect it with my body. Let's do it one more time. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too warm. The, the fan is on and I don't have a way to turn it off. So, we're going to have to pretend that our candle is lit. Okay? Once I ate a pie by Patricia McLaughlin and Emily McLaughlin Charest. So remember, we have a book called Biddle. And do you remember Biddle? These are the same authors who wrote Biddle. And they wrote many books, but this is one of the books that they wrote after Biddle, or maybe before, I'm not sure. So the two sisters wrote Biddle, and now we get to read Once I Ate a Pie by them. Oh, and the person who illustrated it was Katie Schneider. I'm not gonna sit down a little bit. Katie Schneider did that. Um, I love her. It looks like perhaps maybe watercolor, maybe it's an oil painting. We'll have to take a look and see. The first page is a fish. Who has a puppy? I have been thinking about getting a puppy lately. I think I really want one. This is a good time because I'm home and I can train a puppy. If there's anybody out there who knows of a puppy who needs a home, tell me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, like, here's a ball. Some puppy prints and a bone. Dogs like bones. And then on this page, there's a squeaky toy and another ball. Now these are poems, so each one is going to be about a different type of dog. And so each poem is about the animal that's so this one is named Puppy. Puppy, the world is big. Trees too tall, sky too high, snow over my head. What if I get lost? You will chase snowflakes in the winter, the people tell me. Run through the grasses in spring and howl at the moon. 
Not now. I am a puppy. For now, I will stay here by your side. Safe, warm puppy. Mm. I want a puppy. Mm -hmm. Someone help me get a puppy. <laughs> I want a little puppy so bad. Look at how cute he is. He's so cute. He's little. Mm. Mr. Beefy. You want to see what Mr. Beefy looks like? <laughs> Here's Mr. Beefy. I'll show you him again. I am not thin, but I am beautiful. When no one is looking, I steal tubs of butter off the table. I take them to the basement and eat in private. Once, I ate a pie. Oh no, he definitely looks like he has eaten the pie which he was not supposed to be eating. And he is very beefy. He has a lot of nice softness about him. Mm -hmm. Gus. Here's Gus. Oh, look at Gus. Maybe a Gus. If somebody knows of a Gus type dog. Mm -hmm. I want my people in a group like sheep. When someone is in the bathroom, I open the door. Are you all right? They are not happy. I take them back to the others. When they go anywhere, I am watching. I am a herder. Now, herding dogs are an excellent uh, type of dog that they use when you are either on a cattle ranch or on a uh, sheep or goat ranch. And Joshua and I used to live on a cattle ranch uh, when he was little. And there were two dogs there, not this breed of a dog, but there were two herding dogs there. And they definitely herded us making sure we were together and would guard us and make sure we were safe. It was a nice feeling. That's what they do to the animals. They protect them from predators. Mm -hmm. Lucy. Oh, here's Lucy. Look where she is. She's in bed. Mm -hmm. I was adopted from a shelter. I love the couch. It is mine. The chairs and the beds are mine too. And the house. At night, I sleep between my owners. They give me a pillow of my own. <laughs> He's claimed everything in the house. The people, the furniture, and the pillow, they're all his. He loves being there. Oh, I want a puppy. Hmm. Whoopsie. Oh, look at Whoopsie. She's so cute. Whoopsie. My name is Whoopsie, but they call me cute. Who's cute, they ask me, smiling. I cover my eyes with my paws and pretend to sleep. Who's cute, they call again. I run to them. I can't help it. I am cute. <laughs> she is super cute. Look at her trying to be all cute. Darla, you wanna see Darla? Do you know what kind of dog she is? She has wrinkles all over her. She's called a Sharpay. I don't like other dogs. Mm, I like people. And I like the cat who lives with me. When I want to go out, I bat the bell that hangs next to the door. The people come running. I bat the bell many times a day. The people are very tired. When they finally go to bed, I wait. And then when they are asleep, I bat the bell one more time. So Darla likes to bat the bell and make it difficult for the people who take care of her to sleep. Do you have a puppy who always wants to go out after you've already gotten into bed? It happens. Luis, I used to yip. Now I bark. I bark to wake people up. I bark when the doorbell rings. I bark when someone walks by the house. I bark at the television. I bark when I want to eat. I bark when I want to sit where you are sitting. Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> oh, look at how little she is. She's, I think, like a little Pomeranian, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a, a, a puppy that barks all the time? I know that Sage has a dog. Does he bark all the time or she? I can't remember if it's a boy or girl. Sugar. 
No, oh, I'm tired. I want to stay in bed. I don't want to go outside. I don't want to take a walk. I don't want to go in the car. I like to sleep. No, I'm not ready to eat. No, I don't want a snack. Put the covers back over my head. I only get out of bed to chase the cat. And he's not around, is he? <laughs> oh, look at Sugar. Sugar's so cute. She's so curled up and sleepy and sleepy, but then always on the lookout for the cat. So I need a puppy that might like to be with my kittens, right? Mm. Do you have animals at your house that love each other and get along that are not the same, like a dog and a cat? Mm. Three. We are three. We are runners, leapers, chasers. We are soft, sweet, shy. We are kings. We are queens. We are friends. We are three. Uh, now, see, these dogs were bred for racing. They are lovely, but very thin, and they like to be together, and they're a little bit shy. Needle nose. Maybe he has a long nose? We'll see in a moment. I have a very good nose. It is sharp and useful. It, I used to go into, um, I use it to get into what I love. The insides of all things, the refrigerator, the dishwasher, quilts, pillows, dog cookie boxes, cat snap bags, toys. I like the squeaker. I can open mail too. If something is closed, I open it. If it is perfect, I tear it apart. I love my work. I love my nose. Oh, look at how big his nose is. He's called a needle nose. It's really long like a needle. Mm. Community. It is imperative that we find me a dog. Pocket. Oh, Pocket. That's a cute name. They say I am used to sleep in a coat pocket. I have a tiny collar and a tiny coat for when it rains. I have a tiny dish to eat my food and a tiny water bowl. I don't know why my things are so tiny. I am huge. <laughs> Oftentimes, little tiny puppies, they believe they are the biggest animals around and they often scare off much larger animals. Abby, I do not steal, I borrow. Other dogs, bones, and stuffed animals, and balls, and pool toys. My people's slippers and socks, sweaters, and underpants, but my favorite things to borrow are kitchen things. Loaves of bread from the counter, meat off a plate, anything in a bowl. I don't have to give those things back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Do you have an animal that likes to sometimes take things and then eat them? I'm hoping that if I do get a puppy, this is not the case. What about my plants? Mm. Mm. Tilly and Maud. We look alike, but we are not alike. I am shy. I am sly. I do what they tell me. Here, I'll show you. There's two of them. I do what they tell me. I bury my food under the couch and cushions. I like to chase balls. I like to sleep. I pick private places to go to the bathroom. I do not care where I do it. Yesterday, I did it in the living room. When there is food on the table, I can be trusted. <sighs> not me. We look alike. But we're different, except for one thing. I love Tilly, and I love Maud. So they love each other, but they are different. Do you have a brother or sister who is different than you? I bet you do. You don't like the same, sometimes you might like the same things, but sometimes you're just different people. You like different things, and that's okay. That's just like these two puppies. Mm -hmm. Luke. Oh, I wonder who Luke is. 
the sun is warm and I sleep. I dream about when I was young. I chased snowflakes in winter and ran through the grasses in spring. I still bark when I want to. And tonight, I might howl at the moon. Oh, here's Luke. He's an older dog. He's not a puppy anymore. Mm. But now the sun is warm and I sleep and dream. Mm -hmm. Bum. I love this book. I love the poems. The poetry is beautiful. How you're looking at one item and then creating a story around it. And then they had a collection of all of those stories and put it in one book. So if you don't want to write a long story, you can write a poem. And if you write more than one, it would be called a collection. And of your work, you can put together a collection of poetry, and that could be your offering to your family or to your loved ones, or to me if you want to send me a poem. I would love it if we all could write a poem about one thing that you see either out in nature or that's in your house. It could be anything. You could write a poem about your animal. You can write a poem about your parents and the poem itself is just giving thoughts and ideas to that item so we talked about what the puppies did what the puppies ate it could be anything you want the poem can be anything you want use your imagination well i hope that you not only go and buy this book but also find other poetry books that you might want to start reading as well because poetry is beautiful. Books are beautiful. Imagination is beautiful. I love you all. I hope you have an amazing day today or the rest of your day. And wash your hands, eat yummy food, do some yoga, meditate, and take nice deep breaths. I love you.